New Scotland Yard, Part 1, Production Number 1595, Take 1. Sorry about this. It's all right, sir. We've tried the doorbell, have you? Yes, I rang the bell. I also knocked. Wrong one, sir. Did you see him at all over the weekend? Not since Saturday morning, sir. Maybe he went away for the weekend, sir. Well, he wasn't planning to. Oh, maybe he uh, missed his train, sir. Oh, my God. Stay where you are. There's a doctor on the third floor, sir. He doesn't need a doctor. Uh, better not, sir. What? Uh, fingerprints, sir. We don't want your prints on the phone, do we? Yes, of course. Stupid of me. You can use my phone downstairs, sir. It, sir. Hmm. It, telephone, sir, downstairs. Yes. Uh, you go. You call the police. Uh, better if you go, sir. I'm not too fast on my pins anymore. The wife will let you in. I'll stay here. Uh, well, just as you say, sir. Police are on the way, sir. They said not to touch anything. Right. Mr. Weston. Oh, I'm sorry. You were saying that Mr. Leonard was in government service? Uh, Lenar. He pronounced it Lenar, the French way. I see. He was in government service. Yes, that's right. Central Office of Information. He's my... He was my assistant. Also a friend? Well, yes, we'd worked together for a long time. When did you last see him? About midday. 
When did you last see him alive? Oh, on Friday. Morning? Evening? When he was leaving the office, about six o'clock. Did you leave together? No. I see. So you have no idea if he came straight home or not? No. Have you been in communication with him over the weekend? No. Hmm. Did you have an appointment here with him this morning? No, but he was due at a meeting at 10.30. We were rather worried when he didn't turn up. We? Uh, Mrs. Hargreaves and myself. Well, she's my other assistant. I see. So you came round here and got the porter to let you in? Ultimately. Is that your normal reaction when a colleague doesn't turn up for work on a Monday morning? No, of course not. I tried ringing first. When there was no reply, I was afraid he might be ill. So ill he couldn't answer the phone? But he might have had a fall. He might not have been here at all. Well, I knew he wasn't going away for the weekend. Yes, but he could have gone out for a walk or been involved in an accident, taken to hospital. Oh, I suppose Or so. did you know he was here? No, of course I didn't know. But after I got no reply, I telephoned the porter, and he said that the Sunday papers and the two days' milk were still outside the flat. Hmm. All right. Now, you say he was a friend. A close friend? Well, I wouldn't say very close. Well, close enough to know about his private life. Well... No, not really very much. Can you think of anyone with whom you might have quarrelled? No. Well, quarrelled, I, I don't know, but not this. Mm. Where were you over the weekend? Me? Yes, I shall be asking the same question of everyone who knew him. Everyone I can find, that is. I was away, staying in the country with my chief, Mr Potter. And when did you go? Well, he drove me down on Friday evening and back again this morning. Mm. Good. Now, did Mr Leonard... Uh, Lena, mention anyone he was going to see over the weekend? There was a young fellow who came to see him about six on Saturday, uh, and a girl about midday. I'd seen them both before. Well, regular visitors? Uh, not too regular, but uh, they'd both been before. Yeah, names? Uh, no. Well, descriptions then. Uh, the girl was about 20, pretty, shortish, dark hair, a bit untidy, no beads and bit, and oh, yeah, that uh, nasty muck on her fingernails, sir. Uppity, too, cheek me, you know, about my leg. Um, Kids have got no manners nowadays. Oh, kids never did have manners. What about the man? Oh, flashy. Yeah, definitely a flash Harry type. You know, too good to be true. Like a film star, all teeth and trendy clothes. <laughs> Neighbours? What about them? Nice, quiet people we got here? Yeah, well, it couldn't have been so quiet on Saturday. Hell of a fight went on in there. Oh, well, uh, that's when it happened. Then. You had no complaints about noise? Well, I wouldn't, would I? Chambers are number six, he's in New York, the Murdochs are eight, they're away for the weekend, and, well, oh, Mrs Harris and number nine, she's as deaf as a post. You could drive a tank right through number nine and she wouldn't hear it. Come in a minute, will you? Take down a statement. You're right. Uh, where, can I go now, then? Yeah, no, not yet. We'll be needing a statement from you, too. I've got me work to do. Yeah, haven't we all? Well, I've told you everything I can. Do I have to go through it all over again? I ought to be getting back to my office. Another worker. Time is. I was getting quite worried. I've been with the police. Mr. Potter's been ringing you since. Please. Morris is dead. Jean, have you got anything here for a headache? No, but there's a slot machine in the canteen. You haven't got anything here? No. For God's sake, what happened? How did he die? He was murdered. Probably on Saturday night. Someone cracked his skull open with a decanter. I can't believe it. Morris, of all people, he was so quiet. Jean, I really would appreciate it if you would get me some aspirin or something. My head's splitting. That damn machine never works. Well, try, would you? Please.
Morning, Mr. Secker. Having some trouble, are you? Uh, no, not really. I um, just thought it was time I had a checkup. Aye, it certainly is. Must be a year now since I saw you last. Damn me, would you look at the time? Sally, I wonder, would you feed the meter for me, please? There we are. Meanwhile, just refresh my memory, will you, Mr. Secker? never to come here. We had an appointment last night. Why didn't you keep it? I couldn't. Something's happened. Listen, Sonny, there are rules in this game. I make them, you obey them, understand? Now, you're paid to deliver that film to me. Where the hell is it? I waited for yours in that damn pub for you. I haven't got it. There is no film. I never saw him. Go on. Make it good. It'll have to be. Look, I went round to his flat on Saturday night as we arranged. The whole place was like a morgue, including Lenar's flat. He wasn't there. Or if he was, he wasn't answering the door. I phoned two or three times from call boxes after that, but still no reply. And I tried all yesterday as well. Why did you keep an appointment and tell me this last night? Look, I went back to Lenar's flat last night. Why? He might just have made a mistake about the days, but still no reply. Was his car there? Yes, in the garage, but he wasn't. I hung around for an hour or so and then went home. Get up. What? Get up. Now listen, don't come near here. Don't try to contact me. I'll find out what's happened and get in touch with you in the usual way. Listen... What is it? Get out. He was an assistant information officer, is that right? Yes. And Mr. Weston is a senior information officer? Yes. Did you get on well with Mr. Lenard? Oh, very. He was a pleasant man. Conscientious and intelligent. And hard-working? Well, yes. Yes, I suppose you'd say he was. Did you ever take work home with him? Oh, yes, often. We all do. Catching up on our reading. Including classified material. What? Was Mr. Lenar in the habit of taking home classified material? Oh, no, of course not. Why, of course not? He didn't handle any. He wasn't authorised to. Ah, and Mr. Weston? Oh, yes, but very rarely secret files, only restricted or confidential. Mm, but Mr. Lenar could have had access to them. Well, yes, but what are you suggesting? I'm not suggesting anything, just collecting facts. Irrelevant facts in this case, I can assure you. Oh, very likely. 90% of the information we collect does turn out to be irrelevant. Now, tell me some more about Lenar as a person. Oh, I wasn't a personal friend. Yes, but you'd have noticed if he was upset or agitated. Yes. Well, had he been? No, I don't think so. Except? Yeah? Well, he did have a bit of an upset a few weeks ago, and that seemed to knock him off balance for a while. Uh -huh. What sort of an upset? Well, he had a stamp collection, yeah. quite a valuable one, I believe, about 2,000 stamps altogether. And I think he lost them all. Lost? Well, he was a bit vague about it, and I didn't really like to pry, but I gather they were stolen. But the local police should have some record about this, surely. Yes, I expect so. Is, uh, is this yours? Extraordinary. It's Morris's. Why extraordinary? I mean that it should be here. He usually took it home with him. Always. Not last Friday, apparently. Where was it? Up against the wall. I had to go to my knees to get it. Did you see him leave with it on Friday evening? Well, no, I didn't actually see him taking it. But then it's like asking if he went home wearing shoes. I mean, one wouldn't look at his feet. One would assume that he was wearing shoes. Do you see what I mean? I get the general drift, yes. Uh, no, I don't know. Well, really, I couldn't go now, even if I wanted to. Uh, the police want to see me again. No, I've no idea exactly when. Uh, they're in with Jean now, going through some of Morris's stuff. Yes, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hargreaves. Oh, come in, Mr. Kingdom. Uh, do sit down. <coughs> Would you like some tea or something? Oh, no, thank you. We've had time now to make some inquiries into Lenar's background. Yes. Now, you said this morning that you weren't a close friend of his. That's right. But you were his brother-in-law. Well, yes. <laughs> Why didn't you mention that in your statement? Well, I didn't think it was relevant. I mean, my sister divorced him years ago. Three years ago, to be exact. Yes. Why did she divorce him? The grounds were desertion. Yes, we know that. Why did the marriage break up? He never discussed it with me. And your sister? Was there a third party involved? Not that I know of. And where's your sister now? I don't know. <laughs> no. Well, she went abroad after the divorce. We lost touch. We were never very close. You're not close to anyone, are you? 
What happened to the daughter? Robin? Was that her name? It's what she's always called. Did she go abroad with her mother? No, she's here in London. How did she get on with her father? As well as the young ever get on with parents. But he was devoted to her, obsessed almost, I'd say. Are you in touch with her? I see her occasionally. But you're not very close. Uh, so, you uh, lost touch with your own sister, but not with your niece or your brother. Well, how could I lose touch? I worked with him. Ah, yes. Was that pure chance? Good Lord, no. Morris and Lisa, my sister, ran a business together. A, a boutique. But the money all came from Lisa. So, when the marriage split up, the business folded up to and Morris found himself out of a job. I suggested he could do a lot worse than come here. You actively helped him to come here? I gave him a reference, if that's what you mean. No string pulling? That sort of thing doesn't happen here. No, then it's just a coincidence that you and your brother-in-law had adjoining offices. Not at all. Morris began here as a clerical officer in a different division. It was entirely his idea to apply for a post as an AIO in this section. He had been with me for about six months. He was a very able man, you know. He had a great future in the civil service. Had he? Uh, do you recognize that? Oh, please. Is it Morris's? I'm asking you. It could be, I suppose. It's a common enough type. Hmm. Did he normally leave it in his office over the weekend? I have no idea. He wasn't in the habit of taking it home. We all take work home with us occasionally. Presumably he did too. Yeah, presumably. Now, Mr. Weston, I'm afraid I have to ask you to come along with us and uh, make a further statement. Certainly. I'll just put these away. And this time, don't leave anything out. Is that where you keep secret files? Not secret. Confidential. A simple lock and key. Not very secure, is it? It's not very secure material. I often wonder why some of it's classified at all. Well, I'm ready, Mr. Kingdom. Right. Can I help you? I'm sure you could. But that's not what you're there for, is it? What was it you wanted? Well, now, that's strictly my business, isn't it? Did you want to see the occupant of flat number seven? What if I did? Name, please. Lambert. First name? Charles. Look, I don't want to seem inquisitive, but what's this all about? So you wanted to see Mr. Lanier? For God's sake, do I have to produce a passport? Your address, please. Sir? What? Your address, where'd you live? Look, I'm beginning to find this conversation pretty frugal. I'll see Mr. Leonard some other time. Just a minute, sir. I haven't finished with you yet. Now, don't be stupid, sir. I don't want to spoil your nice coat. Right. Then get on to special branch. I want everything they know I can find out about Weston, Lenar, and Mrs. Hargreaves. Also, the contents of Weston's filing cabinet, who else held keys, who else had access to it, and anything else they can dig up. All right? Now then, Weston. He'll be leaving here soon. I want him watched. No, no. Not the full 24-hour job. Not yet. I just want to know if he goes straight home from here, and if not, where he does go. Right? Pick him up again in the morning. And again, I simply want to know if he drives straight to work or if he tries to make contact with anyone on the way. All right. Yeah. Come in. No, that's all for now, I think. Thank you. Bye. It took a bit of time, but it's all there. I hope so. Thank you, Mr. Weston. Is that all? You in a hurry? Well, I'm expecting some friends to look in. I ought to be getting home. No, well, I think that's all for now. Thank you. Oh, uh, there is one thing. Just before you go, would you mind giving us your fingerprints? Mine? Purely for the purposes of elimination. When you went into the flat and found the body, you almost certainly touched something, and you'd been to the flat on previous occasion. Oh, yes, of course, I see it. All the you same, can refuse I... to cooperate if you wish. But I can't think of any reason why you should do that, can you? Of course not. That's all right. Yeah, this way, sir. Oh, uh, one more thing. Your niece's address. Oh, that's all right. We found it in Anna's address book. Under Robin.
Yeah. Miss Lenar. Are you a pig? Uh, I am a police officer, yes. Then you're a pig. No pigs allowed in here today. Sorry. Uh, I would like to have a word with you about your father. What about him? Open the door, please. I saw that little pig. This place has got mirrors. Uh, we're sorry to intrude on you, Miss Lenar. Um, I'm Chief Superintendent Kingdom, and this is Sergeant Ward. They said a Chief Superintendent about parking tickets. Uh, this is not about parking tickets. When did you last see your father? <laughs> hey, that's great, you know that? When did you last see your father? That's good. What's it got to do with you, Mr. Pig? When did you last see him? On Saturday afternoon. Do you have regular meetings? No. Don't you get on with your father? Did I say that? I didn't say that. Did I say I didn't get on with my father? Do you? Look, what is all this? Have you seen Mr. Weston recently? Uncle Guy. This is really getting wild, you know that? I'm not going to answer another one of your damn nosy questions, Mr. Pig, until you tell me what this is all about. I'm afraid I have bad news for you. Your father was murdered on Saturday in his flat. I can't think of anything to say. It's not awful. I can't think of a damn stupid thing to say. Oh, I'm sorry. I am. It's just that I don't feel anything very much. Well, not yet, anyway. You've made me smudge on What time did you go to see your father on Saturday? About three o'clock. Mm -hmm. How did he see you? Upset. Do you know why? Yes, me. Well, that's why I went to see him. I'm engaged to be married to a man he can't stand. Why not? Lack of security. Poor future, no prospects. David's an actor. Out of work? At the moment, so am I. Oh, you're an actress? At the moment. Like them. Riveting. Now, according to the porter, your father was visited by a young man on Saturday afternoon. Could that have been your fiancé? He wouldn't go without me. Well, perhaps you could tell us where we can get in touch with him. What did the porter say this young man looked like? Like an actor, what does your young man look like? There you are. Instant identical. That promising young actor, David Secker. Mr. Lambert? Well, what? Nothing to say. You've had plenty to say about everything else. I'm sorry. I'm not going to burst into tears, if that's what you mean. Was he shot? His skull was smashed by a decanter. Cut glass, I suppose. Nothing but the best for poor Murray. Did you have an appointment with him yesterday afternoon? Yes. At that time of day? He doesn't leave the office till six. I'm a patient man. You were going to wait in the corridor? In the flat. I've got a key. Leonard gave you a key? How else do you think I got it? You were close friends, then? We were friends. Close friends. Is that what they call a leading question? Would you like to answer it? I know what you're hinting at. Am I right? It's not illegal. Mr. Lambert, what sort of relationship did you have with Maurice Lenar? Intimate. Thank you. You're welcome. How long have you known him? About a year. Where'd you meet him? At a party. Mm -hmm. Ever meet a man called David Secker? No. But you know of him. He was a friend of Morris. Did he share the same sort of relationship? I couldn't say, I'm sure. Where were you on Saturday afternoon and evening? At work. Can that be verified? Do I need an alibi? What is your work? I'm a stevedore.
want you out of London today, laddie. I've got some cash for you here. But, um, what about Lenar? Don't you read the papers? He's dead. The place has been crawling with police since midday yesterday. If you took those files home with them, the special branch will be poking around by now, so I want you out of the way. Where shall I go? Come on, use your head, Secker. But how'll I get in touch with you again? Never fear, laddie. I'll be with you all the way. You won't be moving an inch now from now on without my knowing about it. We're together. Like links in a chain, you and I, Secker. And if one snaps, the other one's finished too. Now just remember that. Get out and keep your mouth shut. Oh, by the way, what about the camera? What? The Minux man, where is it? Oh, um, it's at my digs. Get rid of it. Right. Ever seen him before? Uh, this is the bloke, the man who came on Saturday. You're certain? No doubt about it, that's him. You uh, can't mistake those teeth, can you? Hmm. Now, did Mr. Lenard take his briefcase to the office every day? Like clockwork, never went without it. And I suppose you don't happen to recall if he brought it home with him on Friday evening? No, sorry, I didn't see him then. No. Uh, I believe he collected stamps. He used to, he had quite a big collection. Had? Well, he had a break in about six or seven weeks ago when uh, some clown poured acid all over the lot. You sure about that? Salt myself. Anything else destroyed? No, just the same. Nothing stolen? Well, he said not. He was rather upset about it, almost in tears. Hmm. Strange he didn't report it to the local police. Oh, he did? Well, they have no record of it. Uh, I said I'd call the police and he told me not to bother because he'd already done so. But did you notice any police around there after that? Well, no, I didn't. Now you come to mention it. Did he ever speak of the matter again? Not to me. Uh, odd that. You know, about the police. Hmm. Did you find him odd in any other way? Uh, how do you mean? Well, friends, for instance. He didn't seem to have many. More male than female, perhaps. Well, if you mean what I think you mean, I, I just don't know. It never struck me before. Oh. Well, thank you. I don't think I need to ask you any more for the moment. If you go with this officer, he'll take your statement down in writing. Right, you Oh, there is one more thing. Yeah. I believe it was you who contacted the police yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Weston found the body. Why didn't he make the call? Well, we found it together, really. But there were none of your prints on the phone in Lenar's flat. Where did you make the call? At ground floor. My flat. I see. You made the call. Mr. Weston stayed in Lenar's flat. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Putting a tail on Weston paid off. He stopped on his way into town this morning, threw something into a river. He claims it was one of those expendable lighters. They're bringing him in. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. Check his alibi. Again. There's little doubt he spent the weekend at the Potters. Yes, but was he with them all the time? It's less than an hour's drive from London. He could have gone out for a walk. Check every minute of Saturday afternoon and evening. Right. Now, what about this, uh, whatever it was? Yeah, I'm ahead way? of you. Frogmen are already on their way. Anything on Secker? Well, he didn't go to his digs last night and he hasn't been there this morning, but there's a suitcase and some of his clothes missing. Hmm. Oh, yeah, Kingdom, get me a car straight away, will you? Right, we'll get somebody else to check Weston's alibi. You go and see the girl again. She must know where he is. I'm on my way. Little piggy. I'm one of the goodies. What do you want? To come in, please. Have you got a warrant? I wouldn't bother with pleasantries if I had. Mm. Thank you. What do you want? Uh, David Secker. We're engaged, not living together. I just wondered if you knew where he, where he was. Uh, he left his digs with a suitcase. Why don't you ask his agent? Maybe he's got him a job somewhere. Would he leave London without telling you? 
Look, whoever it was who killed your father didn't like him very much. Now, it's more than likely that David Secker had nothing to do with it, but he is one of the people who must be questioned. Now, do you know where he is or don't you? I don't know. Really, I don't. Yeah, I believe you. Tell me about your parents. Tell you what? Well, when they broke up, you must have been, what, 15, 16? About. But you didn't stay with your mother. I mean, you didn't go to Canada with her. No. Why not? North America doesn't speak to me. Yeah. And the real reason? A new gentleman. He was too young and too snide. Mm-hmm. They married. So I heard. And they're still married. Happily. I don't know. No, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You didn't get on with your mother. And your father? He's an angel. Was. No, he is an angel. That's right, isn't it? Everyone speaks very highly of him. No one who knew him has a word to say against him. That's right. A nice man. A gentle man. But on last Saturday, you fought with him. Who told you that? You did. No, I didn't. I said he was worried about me. Upset was the word you used. You really are a pig, aren't you? So you didn't uh, fight, quarrel, argue? No. Well, we may have argued a bit, but it was all very calm. He never lost his temper. Hardly ever. Once in a blue moon. When he did, it must have been quite something. Yes. Is that why he was murdered? He got mad, got into a fight. I don't know. Yes. Do you? You're a creep. Do you always wear glasses? Not in bed. What's your name? Ward. First name? Alan. Common. Fairly. Why are you called Robin? Why not? It's a boy's name. My father wanted a boy. Um. Hello? Yes. No, not now. Yes. Goodbye. Boyfriend? The butcher. Goodbye, Alan Ward. Not even a cup of coffee. You're on duty. Oh, that's right. I'm on duty. Goodbye. easy. You're going away. Newcastle. I've got a job. It's only for a couple of weeks. The police are looking for you. The police? Pops is dead, David. He's been murdered. <sighs> You're joking. Oh, don't be so damn stupid. He's dead. Someone's killed him. But why? That's <laughs> terrible. How the hell do I know why? Did you, um... Did you say the police were looking for me? There was a man here when you phoned. That's why I couldn't talk. But why me? Well, you and Pops weren't exactly bosom pals. <laughs> How do they know that? They wanted to know why I went to see him on Saturday afternoon. Well, I told them I'd gone to see him to tell him I was marrying you, whether he liked it or not. Well, then they wanted to know the reason why he objected to our marriage. And you told them, of course. I had to. <sighs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> Listen. This job, well, it isn't much, but it's a start. Hmm? I can't afford to turn it down. I've got to be in Newcastle tomorrow morning. To hell with the police. They mustn't know where I am, Rob. They won't. Wait, who is it? How do I know till I've opened it? But, um, are you expecting anyone? Well, yes, Frankie's coming round for a drink. Now relax, they've already tried here. Go away. I expect you've been trying to get in touch with me again about Mr. Secker turning up unexpectedly. Hmm? I was waiting in the car outside.
Thank you. Well done. Newcastle. So? Have you? Who's your agent? Why? He'd know about the job. <laughs> there is no job. No. Oh. Then why'd you lie to her? Because I'm going away and I need an excuse. Going where? Going with a girl. Oh. You're engaged to Miss Leonard and yet you're going away with another girl. Brilliant. Who is she? I'm not telling you. Why not? You're supposed to be an actor, not a gentleman. You're giving me negative vibrations, Ward. Too bad. What time did you say you went to see Leonard on Saturday? I told you that twice already. Tell me again. Why don't you write it down? That's what pencils were invented for. Just answer the question, please. <sighs> About five o'clock. When did you leave? About 5.30. Shortly, is it? What did you go for? I told you that, too, because of Robin. The old man didn't like me. I wanted to know why. I would have thought it was pretty obvious. Would you? He had every right to object to the marriage, if what you're telling me about the girl is true. It is. If it was a girl. Certainly it was. Well, the only way we can verify that is if you give me her name. <laughs> no deal. Look, this is not horse trading. It's a murder investigation. <laughs> well, that's your business. I know nothing about it. No? What sort of relationship did you have with Renard? I've just told you. He didn't like me. Mm. The uh, names in his address book were predominantly male. Most of the entries have red stars beside them. Your name has two. Well, <laughs> it could mean anything. Mm, star usually denotes something rather special. And one of the stars in the book has already admitted that he had an intimate friendship with Leonard. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. Have you any idea how much longer I'm going to be kept waiting? Um, would you like a cup of tea? I've had a cup of tea. I've had two cups of tea. Now, would you mind answering my question, please, Sergeant? Uh, Detective Inspector Jones. Oh, I beg your pardon. Easy mistake to make. Are you working with Kingdom on this case? From now on, yes. Is that usual? Is what usual, Mr. Weston? Well, I mean a chief superintendent and a detective inspector. Oh, I'm special branch. Ah. I see you've met, Mr. Jones. Yes, we introduced ourselves. Now, would you mind telling me why it was necessary to drag me in here again? All right. Why did you throw the camera in the river? On whose authority did you have me followed? My own. Why did you throw the camera in the river? It was broken. I had no further use for it. When you were first asked, you said it was a lighter. Oh, slip of the tongue. <laughs> you have to do better than that. Was there a film in it? I don't know. I don't think so. You can't remember if there was a film in your own camera when you threw it away? There might have been. I don't know. Anyway, if there was, there won't be much of it left by now, I'm afraid. Oh, you'd be surprised, Mr. Weston, what our forensic scientists can come up with. I don't have your aptitude for intrigue, Mr. Jones. I only handle restricted papers. Hardly the sort of information to cause a national catastrophe. Well, no harm may have been done to the national interest, but information useful to a spy covers a pretty wide field, as you must know. They're interested in everything. Defence secrets, scientific discoveries, political decisions, economic facts, even people's character reports. The sort of stuff they could use to recruit agents. Remember that. No, should I? You remember it. It's Lenard's. Well, it could be. Yeah, it's like a million others. As you said before. Yes, I remember now, you seem to find it rather strange that his own briefcase was in his own office. Everyone else seems to find it rather strange that it wasn't at his flat. Now, we've had this case tested for fingerprints. There were none at all on the handle, not so much as a smudged palm print. That's a bit odd, isn't it? Hmm? I mean, it could mean that somebody wiped the handle clean before they stuffed it under the desk in Lenar's office. Now, can you imagine why he'd do a thing like that? I can't think why he should. No, eh, nor can I. Why did you remove this case from Lenar's flat? I haven't touched it. Really? Isn't it odd, then, that we found a fingerprint on the lock? Yes. Forgot to wipe the lock, didn't you? Kingdom. Yes. Yeah. yeah all right. Straight away. Oh, uh, send Cooper in, will you? I'm afraid I have to ask you to wait outside for a while, Mr. Weston. I've asked for an officer to come in. Perhaps you could just go with it. Come in. Ah, Cooper, see if you can find Mr. Weston a cup of tea. Job 
horrible. On the contrary. The lab's come up with something on the camera. Yeah, bring him in, will you? Moderately successful, wouldn't you say? Moderately? That camera was underwater for nearly two hours. I don't know how they got anything. Oh, by keeping the camera wet after it came out of the river. They do what they call a pre-wet operation before the normal processing. And the cassette was so tightly wound, it protected the film. We're just lucky the water was practically static. Kingdom? Yeah. Well. All right. Thank you. Weston's alibi. Stands up. Yes. Sit down, Mr. Weston. Thank you, I'll stand. This may take some time. If it was your intention to get me rattled by keeping me waiting for an hour and a half, I must tell you that you've succeeded eminently. The lab has now processed the film that was in the camera. Some of it was in good enough condition for Mr. Jones to have traced the file that was being photographed. Documentary film distribution in the Far East. A restricted file from your office, Mr. Weston. Why did you take those photographs? I didn't. They were in your camera. No, not mine. Whose was it, then? I don't know. You said it was. That wasn't true. Well, whose was it, then? I don't know. Then ask. I don't know. I tell you, I don't know. Then I suggest you tell me what you do know. And, Mr. Weston, you've lied consistently to me for two days. This time, let's have the truth. I found the file and the camera in Morris's flat. I used the briefcase to take the file back to the office. I felt that if I could get it back undetected, his activities might not be discovered. That was awfully stupid of you, Mr. Weston. Thanks to you, we may have missed exposing an entire espionage cell. He was my brother-in-law. He was a friend. Very noble. You were covering for yourself, not for him. You gave him a pretty strong character reference to get that job. You were his sponsor. You had him transferred to your division. Things would have looked pretty awkward for you if it had emerged that he was a bad security risk. And you knew he was, didn't you? Before yesterday, I mean. I only found out quite recently about his private life. Naturally, you didn't consider it worth reporting. I did my best to prevent anyone, including Morris, from having access to any classified material I handled. Anyhow, he could never have got hold of information useful to a spy. Not now, perhaps. But you said yourself he had a great future in the service. Suppose he'd stayed on, got promotion to principal chief, even. It's called talent spotting, Mr. Weston. To obtain information, enemy intelligence first finds people who can get it for them, or may be able to in the future, like your brother-in-law. His private life made him very vulnerable to persuasion and pressure. Well, I trusted Morris. I felt he had the moral courage to face up to any indiscretion that might be revealed. I didn't know he was the sort of man to allow himself to be exploited. Oh, we're all subject to things like fear and greed. And that's when the weak link snaps. Yes, the Russians have a phrase for it, you know. They say, the scythe has struck a stone. Did he, do you think, spy for... Ideological reasons? Oh, I don't think so. I think he was under pressure. Well, the enemy have quite an armory to suborn people like Lenar. Money, sex, flattery, blackmail. Somebody deliberately destroyed his collection of stamps a few weeks ago. I think it was a sort of warning. If he didn't do what they asked, they'd get him next. Or his daughter. And on Saturday? I don't know. I suppose he'd had enough. I think he finally turned on his tormentor. How much? Count it. Don't you know? About 300, isn't it? Where'd you get it? It fell off the back of a lorry. All right, Stacker. Why don't you make things easier for all of us? Tell us what we want to know. Like what? Like who gave you this money? I won it. Or earned it. If you like. Except you didn't, did you? You never handed over the film, did you? 
Why'd you leave the camera behind? That was a stupid thing to do, wasn't it? Now, as far as I was concerned, you were just another source of information in the investigation of a murder, but not anymore. Things have changed. There's now a matter of national security involved. Why did you kill Morris Lennar? Oh, come on, Secker. It's not Armistice Day. Let's skip the two-minute silences. Would it surprise you to know we found your fingerprints on the whiskey decanter? You couldn't possibly... Why not? Because you wiped it. <laughs> no, of course not. I, um... I remember now. I, um, I helped myself to whiskey while I was talking to him. Well, yes, he, he asked me if I wanted a drink. I said I did. He, um, he told me to help myself, so I poured myself a whiskey from the decanter. Where was the decanter? Um, on a tray in the corner of the room. What else was on the tray? Uh, bottles, glasses. No more decanters? No. Just the one decanter with whiskey in it? Yes, 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 yes. No! No, no, no. There were two bottles of whiskey. There was only one decanter, the one you used to kill Lenar with. It contained brandy. You said a whiskey decanter. Oh, slip of the tongue. You said it had whiskey in it. Didn't have a drink at all, did you? You simply picked up an almost empty decanter and hit him with it. Now, why don't you tell us why? Look, we already know about the stamp collection. Oh, yes. Got men out now checking where you got the acid from. Why don't you save us footwear by telling us yourself? Were they blackmailing you too? What? You're not out of work at all, are you? Who's your boss? Hmm? Who paid you to get information from Lenar? Oh, come on, you're not helping yourself. You don't owe him anything. You know, as well as I do, he'll be out of the country by now. We can't touch him. But we can make sure he never operates here again. So give us the name. Not you again. Let me in, please. What do you want this time? You. That'll be the day. Now, I want you to come with me to Scotland Yard. What for? Tell me everything you know about David Secker. I've told you. No, not enough. This time we want it in writing. I've nothing more to say. You refuse to come with me voluntarily. You prefer to be arrested. Arrested? What for? Conspiracy, espionage, murder. You must be joking. Now, you either knew what David Secker was up to, in which case you are equally guilty, or you didn't, in which case you'd better come along and tell us about it. Pig! Now, look, stop you that! Fight. You smell at the gutter! Look, I'm sorry, I really am. But you've got to face it, he was using you. All right, take him away, lock him up, start preparing the charge. Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't know he was still here. Just going down. It isn't true, is it? I'm afraid it is true, Robin. He was paid to get at your father through you. On Saturday, your father had been drinking heavily. When Secker arrived, your father told him it was to be the last meeting. Secker threatened to do to you what he'd done to the stamp collection. Your father turned on him, attacked him. Secker panicked and hit him. Too hard. I know you don't want to believe it, but you must. Believe it, accept it, then you can start to forget about it. There's no hurry for a statement. Any time do any. Get the doctor to see her. I was a bit rough on her. No, she had to break sometime. Sooner the better. Parents and children. Just as well I never had any. Slings and arrows, Governor. She'll survive. <laughs> 